Tom here from Warren Systems, and we're going to talk about XCPNG and Zen Orchestra and their latest releases right here in March of 2020. And they've made a lot of changes, which is going to be great. So if you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire us for a project, there's a hire us button up at the top. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on services we talk about on this channel. And let's jump right into XCPNG. So I've been using the project for quite a while now, uh, ever since their first release in the 7 series. Now they're at the 8.1 release candidate. And I've been running the release uh, candidate, well, the beta, before it was release candidate. And I've really had no problems. Granted, I'm running it in my lab, but, you know, I do a lot of videos in my lab, so I can say that I'm running it quite a bit and restarting VMs. So let's run down a few things in here. A couple of the highlights are going to be there's obviously a lot of little tweaks, and I'm going to leave links so you can read all the little stuff, but the big things they changed is related to the way they have the improved performance for VM imports and exports using the XVA format. This I tested. I mean, I didn't really do strong testing like, you know, exactly before I loaded, after I loaded, but compared to my production system, I've imported back and forth, and granted, they are different systems, but it does seem quite fast. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm just a positive thinker on that. Storage performance improvements and new I.O. improvements. I It does feel faster and snappier when I'm running Windows on there and running some of the updates. That's definitely, uh, it seems to have improved over time, especially since we moved the system to over to beta, which is the uh, our lab system on there. Now, if you don't know what it is, it probably doesn't matter to you, but uh, the pair virtualization guest is now deprecated. They're removing that from the system. It was a way to set up pair virtualization on there, and I never did a video on it because it wasn't something I really had a need for, but you know, that's that's been deprecated and removed, so hopefully it's not something that you really needed. I don't know anyone that really asked me about it either. Support for AMD Epic 7XX2 added. Now, this is a request I know that people have been excited for is about Epic support, and they're really working diligently to get that support baked in here. Uh, that is a little bit of a challenge because Epic has some really cool features, but also that different architecture means there's some programming challenges around there. Now, they did deprecate, and for good reason, VSS and uh, I think you say that QS. QS, I'm not good at that word, uh, snapshots have been removed. It never did work correctly and caused more harm than good. Now, this is one of those things like when you're doing a snapshot and Windows uh, has files in motion, you would want to use the volume shadow copy. And I will tell you that can be a little bit challenging of trying to get the hypervisor to talk to the drivers to get that. And that's why they just decided to um, you know, getting rid of that part. I kind of get it. And it's not really been an issue when we've restored windows uh, from crashed instances and things like that, or sudden, uh, well, whatever led to windows crashing, restoring from one of those backups that were done without windows being shut down. It, it really hasn't been a problem restoring it. Windows has become more resilient for the most part when it comes to that. Well, at least the servers have uh, Windows 10 is still, it may break on an update, but I'm not here to pick on Windows. Anyways, note that Windows Guest Tools version 9, the default recent version of Windows you install through the Windows update, already removed VSS support even for older versions of XCPNG. So uh, for local storage, there's a lot of changes going on here, and this is moving from the experimental, and this is something Citrix just didn't want to do, moving off of ext3 to ext4 for the local storage repositories. This isn't done 100% automatically, but it's coming out of beta, so there's going to be some changes on there. The downside is you're not going to be able to convert some of your existing ext to ext4. You'll just have to move those servers somewhere else and move them back and recreate the storage. So it's not a huge deal, but um, it's something to be noted make note of if you need that feature and you go, you know, I'd really prefer to use the XT4. If you're loading this new and you're new to XCPNG for the first time, it's going to be able to load EXT4 natively uh, with 8.1. So it's not going to matter if you're building anything new and you can ignore that entire part. They updated uh, more drivers, uh, VM auto start issues in beta. I didn't see this issue. But they apparently some did have a uh, bug in there and new leaf coalesce logic for the VDIs with dynamic limits. I, I believe this was, and I'd seen some discussion in forums where they had when the VMs coalesce, it was uh, for some people with larger systems, it was taking a little bit too long. So they've updated some of that. I have not seen in our systems any of the problems with that, but I'm not running some of the quantities of virtual machines. Uh, most of the ones that we're supporting for our clients or even ours locally here, they have only a, a dozen or so VMs and are reasonably fast machines, and that all plays in part of it. So the coalescence uh, can take place with a reasonable amount of time after you do the snapshots. 
So they do have a uh, improved installer and they do still support and are updated to the latest version of Linux on ZFS. So yes, you can still be build ZFS on here. And I believe I have a video still on that particular topic. Now moving over to uh, the Citrix release, you can, and they reference this back and forth, uh, guest UEFI and secure boot support. So they do have all feature parity with Citrix, but they do things slightly different with XCPNG. Anytime, and this is just an overall uh, thing, because the XCPNG is fully open source, it takes them sometimes a bit longer, and that's mentioned in here about adding the UEFI support. If you get into details, it's because I believe Citrix is using a closed source version, and they only want to use pure open source top to bottom with XCPNG. But now that feature in the 8.1 release candidate is there for the open source UEFI BIOS. So if you want that as a UES, UEFI instead of BIOS as a boot method, that's an option. Now moving over to Zen Orchestra 544. Now Zen Orchestra is the orchestration tool that runs on top of XCPNG. Well, runs as a VM generally is how you set it up, but one Zen Orchestra server can manage many, many XCPNG servers. So I've talked about that relationship before, but generally speaking, you want to run it in a VM on your XCPNG server, and that's how we run it ourselves. Now, you can compile all this from source and get these features well, or you can pay for the commercial version of it. Those are both options when you're doing this. And they're getting closer uh, beta progress on the Zen Orchestra proxy. If you watch my backup and disaster recovery video I did recently on Zen Orchestra and how it works, the proxy option is pretty cool and it's getting closer to being you know, more of a mainstream product. They've added more features to it. One thing about this, it's a little bit tricky and there's no good documentation on how to do an open source compile for the proxy yet because it relies on some of the uh, lab system, not lab, but hub templates. And the hub templates aren't available in the fully open source version. You, it doesn't, they have some hub templates when you use the paid version where you can just pre-install groups of uh, predefined servers. Instead of having to load and build the VM, it can have some predefined ones that just deploys uh, through the hub interface. That is a part of the paid system. You can easily build these yourself and that's how we do them. So that's you know kind of in between. If, you, if you're a paid subscribing member, you'll be able to get that on there. But the backup and continuous replication is being added as part of the proxy. And with that, you know, if you want to dig into how that works, it allows you to manage, let's say, a remote. So I can have my Zen Orchestra here and remote uh, enabled clients who have the proxy set up locally on their machines. And then I can coordinate from my Zen Orchestra here to control other servers remotely, like over a VPN, and coordinate all the backups. So it's really cool to work on it. It's a really neat feature. This one is probably aimed at a lot of the people. Windows 10 is the one that makes me think of it the most, but copy BIOS string from host to VM. You now have the ability to copy a BIOS string from the host VM in cases where you're using licensed software bound to this. And some licensed software is directly tied to the BIOS, so uh, they've added this as an option, and we'll show what that looks like. Uh, UI improvements, clickable SR graph. This I like a lot too. And max vCPU configuration. You can now define the max virtual CPUs and VPN, and we'll have the ability to use them in creation and advanced settings. So you don't just define the CPU and cap limits, you can define that as well. So let's actually look at how this works. Oh, and the last thing is this audit log, which was in here, I believe it was at the top, but the audit log we're gonna to show too. This is really slick. So let's go over here. This is the fully open source compiled one. As you can see, I have no support. And I've said this before in videos, I have the paid version, I have the open source version. I like to get people started on XCPNG. I like to see people using it for their home lab. Therefore, I like to show that you can completely do this for free with the open source version. So I recompiled it just before doing this video to have the uh, latest, actually it's at 5.5.7.3. It's slightly newer than the release because I pulled some of the latest code, but it's got the features that we're talking about here. Let's start with that audit log. So we go over here and let's look at the audit. This is really cool in a professional settings environment because you want to know when someone did something. Like I changed a network interface. So let me go change it again. So we go over here and I'm going to go to this uh, Debian server I have running. Let's go over the network and I'm going to swap it to um, there. I'll just move it over to a different network. So now I change the network interface. So if we go over here to audit log, we can see that Tom and Lawrence Systems, and this was the IP I'm logged in from. As a matter of fact, I'd started it, uh, if you go back in the log, I'd done some stuff from my office, so same user, but different IP address. Uh, dot 18 is my laptop, dot 9 is my uh, desktop, but you can see I changed the virtual interface on there. So and it doesn't give you the virtual interface name, it gives you the UID of it, so there's 
complete traceability to reverse this and figure out what actually was changed if you had to. Uh, maybe in the future they'll do it so it actually just says which interface I swapped it from into. But either way, it's got the information of network ID here and what I changed. So it's completely auditable. And I do like this uh, feature, especially if you have a multi-users using this, let's say a larger corporate environment, Knowing what each user did and what each user changed is uh, pretty important. Now, let's look at this as well. If you go back in here, council, um, actually by changing that, I should get a different IP address. What was that, uh, 10.11? Actually, I changed it both ways, so it should be back at there, but we'll exit out of this and we'll go back over here to the servers, audit log, and you can see that it shows that I went in there. So now you know someone accessed the virtual machine directly and they have an integrity checking system here and you can create a fingerprint and verify the fingerprint for integrity. So that way if someone were to get in here and make changes, you'd have a log on there. That's actually a feature that I think is really handy, especially if you want to deploy this and I've seen this deployed in some larger environments. Now, when we go back over here to like the storage and uh, well, let's click on this and just different ways to get to it, but this is living here and we get the nice mouse over and we have these different details because we see one base copy, one snapshot, it's called the Windows 10 drive and you can get the idea of the different things running on here. This is important because there's a lot that goes on in there and you go, what are all these things uh, taking up my storage and you can get an idea. So let's go back over to and let's make another snapshot, for example. So snapshot, we created a couple more, go back over and look at it, and it'll now have more snapshots listed for there. And it's showing the amount of disk space each one of these is taking up. And of course, you can look at it this way to dig into it um, and see all the snapshots on there. And to go back over to here, like the PFSense lab, see, these are the ones I don't need. Delete, delete. And you can see I'm listed here for coal. Uh, there's a depth of two to coalescence. That while that's coalescing, I wonder if they show up. So let's go back over to general. Oh, actually, I just seen them disappear. So they're they're coalescing, and it right before my eyes looked like it moved a little bit. Yeah, it's getting rid of those snapshots, the old ones. But yeah, I like this feature to be able to have that on there. Now, other thing they had is when you look down here is the option to show you which hosts need updates. There's no updates needed, so I can't show that feature, but it shows them right here and uh, says, all right, this pool, and if you have multiple pools you're managing, it'll show which ones are missing patches and updates. And because there was some updates the other day to bring me to the latest 8.1, so let's look at the host, and you can see I'm on XCPNG 8.1 on GPL v2. So it gives you an idea of the system and says what's on there and if there's any updates, but like I said, I've got it fully patched, uh, so I don't have any, any updates to show you. And the last thing is when you're creating those new VMs is to show you where that button is. So we'll create it on this particular pool here and uh, look under advanced. Well, we gotta select a template first, any template really. Now we got that option, uh, copy BIOS to VM settings. So you can copy the BIOS string like they had showed in, the wind, in that first uh, menu I was showing. So you can copy the BIOS string if you have something licensed to the BIOS, uh, BIOS strings in there. So that's it for the new updates for Zen Orchestra and XCPNG. I'm excited. I will be doing some new videos now that they're in the 8 series of getting started. I still have my getting started with 7.4, but I was just there's some changes to the installer, especially with 8.1. I was waiting for that because it changes some of the like the defaults with the ext4 file system being created. And I have some new servers on order that we're going to be installing. And so before they get installed, I'm going to walk you through how to set up XCPNG on them and walk through the whole process with the, uh, I'm assuming pretty soon with it being released, candidate, it'll be under full release. Release. But even not the release candidate to release is probably not going to change the installer much, but I'll be doing some new getting started videos with that. Um, you know, there's a lot of updates. There's a lot of changes that have come over the years with the product. So if you want to learn more about XCPNG, I'll mention that uh, head over to their forums and it's great. If you have a lot of questions, just go through and read through there a lot. You'll see a lot of the interesting deployments people have and some of the large scale stuff on that. And I've told people as they ask, sometimes in the YouTube comments, a lot of questions. I'm like, if you spend a little bit of time in the forums just reading through the product, you'll see uh, there's a lot of little details, a lot of advanced features, a lot more to talk about than I just covered in here. Uh, but I'm overall really happy with the project and excited to see how much progress it's made since they uh, launched it. Uh, you know, been a little while now since they launched it in the 7 series, uh, but they quickly are adding quite a few features. And if you have other suggestions and feedback and features, the forums, their forums is a great place to talk about that. I just wanted to leave that out there and mention it, but I'll leave links where you can find these blog posts as well and where to get started with it. All right, and thanks. 
and thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.